This is your High Desert Sports Report. The Victor Valley's only weekly action highlights sports program. Covering our area's schools, teams, athletes, and sporting events. Oh, thank heaven on 7-11 for number 11, Travis Holm, coming through with his best performance as a yard bird. The former Hesperia Scorpion throws a complete game victory, putting the yard birds back in the win column this July 11th night in Atalanto. Travis Holm personifies pitching to contact, shutting out Monterey through the first six innings, inducing ground ball double plays in three of the first four frames. Travis Holm goes on to limit the Amberjacks to two runs and becoming the first high desert pitcher this year to register a complete game nine inning triumph. Travis Holm, who pitched at Antelope Valley College upon leaving Hesperia, was in total command. He did not walk a hitter. And I'm a, I'm a contact guy, so, you know, get some contact. I found the zone very effectively. Uh, usually my fastball is, is on. The 2013 Hesperia team captain also contributes at the plate, registering a pair of base hits, including this clutch two-out, two-strike, run-producing single in the fourth. The word clutch is cause for emphasis. The first six runs the Yardbirds score come with two outs in the inning. Travis Holm replicates, coming through at the plate, this two-out single sends Steve Longo across with Yardbirds run number six. Travis Holm battery mate Eric Schneider among the offensive stars. Eric Schneider's towering home run in the fourth puts High Desert ahead to stay. Second home run of the year for Eric Schneider, who explains there were many twists and turns in his road to Atlanta. I um, went to Stonehill College in Boston. It's in the Northeast 10 Conference, the Wood Bat, Division II, NCAA, and I uh, just didn't want to give up playing, didn't get drafted, so I um, looked to uh, continue to play baseball, did a couple tryouts. Uh, I did a tryout for the Angels up in uh, Tempe Diablo. Things didn't work out, ended up going to uh, Trinidad actually for three weeks, and. Blew my ankle out, came back uh, the next year, was in Bakersfield, had an RA year, and um, again, just wanted to keep playing, and I uh, ended up in Tucson this year for the first two weeks, and then I uh, went and got invited to go play up in the Can-Am, things didn't work out, I had to come home early, and um, one thing led to another, and I'm here in Adelanto, two hours from home, family can come, and that's, that's how it happened, long story short. I offer a positive attitude. Um, I'd say um, team personality. Uh, always like to pick each other up. Try to be a leader sometimes. In baseball, it's, uh, it's tougher uh, or it's easier said than done. And um, um, you know, I, I think I'm, uh, you know, I, I can contribute and help out the team, win some ball games. And Demetrius Moore joins Steve Longo, Eric Schneider, and Travis Holm with two hits on the night. This chopper end to right in the third scores Steve Longo with the first run of the ball game. Demetrius Moore then proceeds to steal second, stolen base number 29 on the year, and then the swipe of third, and even 30 for the Yardbirds stolen base leader. Aaron Cook rips this two strike offering into center and it is two to nothing Yardbirds. 24th run driven in on the year for Aaron Cook who is hitting 321. Big innings are commonly big factors in games that turn out in High Desert's favor. The fourth brings that fourth this night. Demetrius Moore back at it again, stroking the double. The scores Steve Longo. You catch a glimpse of home plate umpire Keith Sabo calling the play dead. The errant throw goes into the dugout. Travis Holm trots home. And Demetrius Moore winds up on third. Demetrius Moore credited with one run driven in, his second of the game. He has four. 14 RBIs on the year. Steve Longo, another yard bird with a big night at the plate. This drive down the right field line is just fair and enables Steve Longo to coast into second with his fourth double of the year. 
That is followed by the second of Travis Holmes' run-producing base hits. Steve Longo kicks it in and slides headfirst across the plate. Three runs scored on the night for Steve Longo. The final score, High Desert 8, Monterey 2. Saturday night, July 14th, is Cancer Awareness Night. So don't forget this Saturday night, 7th Annual Cancer Awareness Night, where the players are going to be wearing these special jerseys out on the field, and you can bid on them up on the concourse Saturday night to take these jerseys right off the players' backs. Midway Home Solutions Action Highlights. This video sports online report presented by Midway Home Solutions. Cool solutions to beating the heat. Huge selection of scratch and dent, air conditioners, refrigerators, freezers at closeout prices. Midway Home Solutions. Your High Desert Sports Report is brought to you by Down Home Grill in Victorville on the corner of Bear Valley Road and Ridgecrest Drive. The world-class auctioneers at I-15 Auctions. Bid fast, bid last. I-15 Auctions. Midway Home Solutions in Victorville, providing highest quality home appliances at discount prices for six decades. And Iwan Zak Law Firm, trial lawyers for serious problems and by the Community Table Restaurant in the Holiday Inn in Victorville, supporting high desert teams, athletes, and sports programs. Greg Gosden registers his top performance of the season and a most important victory as High Desert blanks California City and takes Game 1 of the Showdown Series for second place in the Pacific Division. Greg Gosden holds the whip tails to four hits over seven shutout innings, striking out eight in a clutch 95-pitch masterpiece. The Yardbirds and Whiptails were deadlocked in second in the Pacific Division when this series began. The 23-year-old Nebraskan is a 2012 graduate of Elkhorn South High School. Greg Gosden pitched at the University of Nebraska Omaha before joining the Pecos League Hollywood Stars in 2017. Thirteenth appearance on the mound for Greg Gosden on the eve of a Friday the 13th, seventh time called upon to start by skipper Sip Garza. He will depart after seven, securing his first victory of the season, a second straight superlative start by a high desert starting pitcher. This performance giving Sip Garza assurances that his pitchers are approaching the point he hopes to see as postseason playoffs are fast approaching. And this is against the team that would be high desert opening round opponent were those playoffs to begin tomorrow. At stake, a home field playoff advantage, a benefit the Yardbirds were denied the year prior. High Desert did not have a single home field playoff game on the road to winning the 2017 Pecos League Championship. This night, High Desert gets all the scoring they will need early, and it is Demetrius Moore kick-starting the offense in both of their first two rallies. Demetrius Moore leads off the ball game with the base hit to left. Then, on a hit and run, Kent Blackstone drives it to the wall, forcing Demetrius Moore to retrack his steps. The throw goes out of play, and Demetrius Moore winds up on second. With Jason Johnson Wilcoxon at the plate, Demetrius Moore swipes third, stolen base number 31 for the Homestead, Florida Speedster. Jason Johnson Wilcoxon beats out the infield hit, sending Demetrius Moore home with the only run High Desert will need this night to beat the Whiptails. RBI number 40 on the year for Jason Johnson Wilcoxon, who leads the Yardbirds in runs driven in. Jason Johnson Wilcoxon registers two hits on the night, raising his batting average to an even 370. Eric Schneider follows with the base hit to the left side. Eric Schneider following his multiple hit game the night prior, reaching base twice this night. He and Jason Johnson Wilcoxon will be stranded in the first. 
End of one, one nothing yard birds. I want to interject this clip of Eric Schneider stealing second much later in the game. His interaction with Whiptail's second baseman, all-star Scott Stetson, indicative of the good sportsmanship that prevails on display by these Pecos leaguers who serve as role models for our young fans and ball players. It is the speed of Demetrius Moore demonizing the Whiptails again in the third. The bunt off left-hander Ben Herrick momentarily bobbled that rushing the play typical of defenders hurrying things to try and beat Demetrius Moore on any given play. Second consecutive base hit for the Yardbirds leadoff hitter. Stolen base 32 on the year with Aaron Cook at the plate again pointing out California City's pitcher a southpaw still speed demon Demetrius Moore gets the jump and steals the base. Stealing third against a left-handed pitcher is easier than stealing second, Demetrius Moore accomplishing that on the very next pitch. Whiptail's third baseman Hunter Villanueva responding to the frustration of California City skipper Dave Peterson applying the tag to Demetrius Moore belatedly, then again tagging Yardbird skipper Sip Garza to boot, contending that time was not called and the base runner should be called out when he steps off the bag. Kent Blackstone promptly sends the base hit in the center field. Demetrius Moore scores easily. First of two Kent Blackstone run scoring base hits on the night. The all-star second baseman knocks in an insurance run in the seventh, giving Kent Blackstone 38 RBIs on the year. This is seventh inning action. Pinch hitter Andrew Calderon singles to center. He will advance to second on a Demetrius Moore sacrifice bunt, then to third on an infield ground out before scoring the final run of the game on Kent Blackstone's two out RBI single. Greg Gosden's seven innings of shutout ball precedes Avery Brandon's one, two, three frame, the eighth. The night prior, Yardbirds fans were treated to the team's first complete game victory by a starter, Travis Holm. This night, another rarity, the high desert pitchers combine to shut out an opponent. Kevin Kelleher is called upon to close it out. Fourth appearance out of the bullpen for the Miramar Beach, Florida, 25-year-old. The importance of Kent Blackstone driving in Andrew Calderon with an insurance run looms greater when Eli Roundtree steps in, representing the tying run with two on and two out. Kevin Kelleher fires, called strikes past the Whiptails right fielder before getting him swinging to end the ball game. The three to nothing triumph leaves High Desert a game up on the Whiptails in the battle for second place in the Pacific Division. Saturday night, July 14th, is Cancer Awareness Night. And so don't forget this Saturday night, 7th Annual Cancer Awareness Night, where the players are going to be wearing these special jerseys out on the field, and you can bid on them up on the concourse Saturday night. And the winning bids at the end of the game will be invited down onto the field to take these jerseys right off the players' back. I-15 Auctions, sold on supporting high desert sports. I-15 Auctions, from estate auctions to high quality used vehicles at low, low prices. Terry Kurtz here throwing you an invitation to catch the 30-minute action highlights program, your High Desert Sports Report, showing daily on the Victor Valley Television Network, victorvalleytv.com. Your High Desert Sports Report is brought to you by Down Home Grill in Victorville on the corner of Bear Valley Road and Ridgecrest Drive. The world-class auctioneers at I-15 Auctions. Bid fast, bid last. I-15 Auctions. Midway Home Solutions in Victorville, providing highest quality home appliances at discount prices for six decades. And Iwan Zak Law Firm, trial lawyers for serious problems. And by the Community Table Restaurant in the Holiday Inn in Victorville, supporting high desert teams, athletes, and sports programs. 
High Desert Yardbirds fans who come out to support Cancer Awareness Night are in for the longest Adelanto Stadium game of the year and are treated to some truly exciting baseball, including the Yardbirds' most outstanding defensive play of the season in what becomes a classic encounter between Pecos League Pacific Division contenders. The Yardbirds and California City Whiptails go at it for 12 innings. Adolfo Espinosa takes the mound for High Desert. Yardbirds players in their brilliant purple standing against cancer jerseys, which are auctioned off in the course of the contest. Tenth start of the season for the 2012 Oak Hills All-CIF Pitcher of the Year and 2014 All-Conference Pitcher at Victor Valley College. Adolfo Espinoza will endure a torturous second inning, suffering a severe lack of defensive support. California City scores seven in the second, all seven runs unearned. A 2018 Pecos League All-Star, Adolfo Espinoza will reestablish his command and control of the game, striking out three and shutting out the whiptails in innings three, four, and five. All runs scored against him unearned. Adolfo Espinoza exits maintaining a 2.74 earned run average, lowest among Yardbirds starters and third lowest among all Pecos League starting pitchers. Jake Marshall gets a Yardbirds third inning rally started, the single up the middle leading off the third, one of two Jake Marshall base hits this game. Adolfo Espinoza makes his presence felt at the plate, singling up the middle, sending Jake Marshall to second. As a hitter, Adolfo Espinoza is no liability at the plate. He has collected five base hits and driven in a pair of runs in this his rookie season in the Pecos League. Demetrius Moore lays down the bunt to load the bases with nobody out. One of two Demetrius Moore base hits on the night we like to point out time and time again the way the speed of Demetrius Moore becomes an irrepressible weapon for the Yardbirds. Called upon to bunt with two on and nobody out and his team trailing, Demetrius Moore executes brilliantly. Defenders know they have no recourse but to hope the bunt rolls foul. Demetrius Moore has loaded the bases. This sets the stage for Aaron Cook, who will drive in the first Yardbirds run with the first of his three base hits on the night. Aaron Cook drives the OM2 pitch through the right side of the infield. Jake Marshall scoring from third. First scoring step in high desert, battling its way back into this contest. Aaron Cook stays on the two-strike delivery and pounds it through the infield. The RBI, the 25th on the year for the switch hitting shortstop. His three hits this night leave him with a 316 batting average. Kent Blackstone drives it deep to left center. Adolfo Espinoza tags and scores easily, and Demetrius Moore beats Tino Minchin's throw, sliding into third. The RBI, first of two this game for Kent Blackstone, Demetrius Moore's alert and aggressive base running enables the next Yardbirds swing of the bat to produce another run. By night's end, Kent Blackstone will have registered 42 runs driven in on the gear. The next Yardbirds run comes off the bat of Jason Johnson Wilcoxon, who drives left fielder Johnny Abadusky back to the warning track. Demetrius Moore tags up, and High Desert has cut the Whiptails lead to four. It is seven to three, end of three. The next scoring comes in the fifth. Back-to-back -back base hits by Demetrius Moore and Aaron Cook set up Kent Blackstone with two on, nobody out. The Yardbirds All-Star second baseman rips the base hit through the right side. Demetrius Moore scores, Aaron Cook to third. That, the 42nd run driven in for Kent Blackstone. Jason Johnson Wilcoxon stays back on Rich Edwards' breaking pitch, driving it down the left field line for a ground rule double. Demetrius Moore scoring on the play. Whiptails skipper Dave Peterson thinks the ball was foul and questions umpire John Bowman's ruling to no avail. 
Team high RBI 43 for Jason Johnson Wilcoxon, although league stats are inconclusive and misleading because they have Jason Johnson Wilcoxon listed on one line with 24 RBIs and Jason Wilcoxon listed separately with another 19. Regardless of that, the Yardbirds have closed California City's gap to three on Aaron Cook's run. It is seven to four. Shane Brown's deep drive to center sends Kent Blackstone home, and it is seven to five. RBI number 39 on the season for the Yardbirds, quiet leader, who will send a similar drive off the wall in extra innings, missing a walk-off home run by a matter of inches. The run is the 42nd scored by Kent Blackstone, who trails only Ronnie Grant's 48 runs scored in that department. Ronnie Grant's tremendous confidence as a hitter is repeatedly demonstrated in his willingness to work the opposition's pitcher to a two-strike count. That is the case again here. The one and two delivery, the off-speed pitch, driven into center field, scoring Jason Johnson Wilcoxon. The Yardbirds have wiped away the Whittails lead. The ball game is tied at seven. One of three, Ronnie Grant hits this game, hiking his team-high batting average back up to 424. That is second highest among all Pecos League hitters. This game evolves into pitchers' duels. The next seven innings, a battle of the bullpens as Jordan Norton comes on in the sixth for the Yardbirds. Tenth appearance for the all-star pitcher and only the second out of the bullpen, the Yardbirds get this defensive play from third baseman Steve Longo, knocking down the hard-hit grounder and throwing out gentle giant Peter Pena out at the plate. Jordan Norton's relief stint is excellent. The 24-year-old out of Seymour, Tennessee, strikes out three in shutting out the Whiptails over three innings of work, giving him 41 strikeouts in 52 innings on the year. The Yardbirds have a number of quality at-bats and clutch base hits on the way to the 12-inning marathon. In fact, High Desert has the potential winning run in scoring position in the 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th innings. But Whiptail's relievers put their big boy pants on and come on to snuff out each and every Yardbirds rally effort the rest of the way. The Yardbirds have their share of excellent defensive workmanship as well, with catcher Jake Marshall on the receiving end in this sequence, first blocking the pitch in the dirt with a runner on third, then, High Desert Defensive Play of the Year. Right fielder Jason Johnson Wilcoxon makes the Major League caliber throw to the plate to nail a tagging up Whiptail's base runner, Jake Marshall applying the tag for the inning ending double play that denies California City a go ahead run in the ninth. The off-beleaguered Yardbirds bullpen gets an admirable effort from newcomer Harold Miles, making his first appearance for High Desert. The 6-5 fireballer strikes out three and three and two-thirds innings in his Yardbirds debut. Demetrius Moore does all he can to put himself in position to score the breakthrough run, stolen bases 34 and 35 on the year before he is stranded in the 10th. He will steal his 36th in the 12th, regaining his lead in the Pecos League in the stolen base department. Shane Brown comes within inches of ending it all with a walk-off home run in the 11th. The deep drive bounces off the top of the wall and back into play. The stand-up double somewhat symbolic of how close the Yardbirds come this night to emerging victorious. High Desert out hits the Whiptails 17 hits to 8 but fall a half game and back of California City in this showdown for second place in the Pacific Division. High Desert returns home Tuesday, July 17th against the Pacific Division leading Bakersfield Train Robbers.
Down Home Grill is backing the Yardbirds all the way and is extending a free meal to hometown favorite and Yardbirds all-star Adolfo Espinosa. Down Home Grill is open every day, 6 in the morning until 10 at night at the corner of Bear Valley Road and Ridgecrest Drive in Victorville. Your High Desert Sports Report is brought to you by Down Home Grill in Victorville on the corner of Bear Valley Road and Ridgecrest Drive. The world-class auctioneers at I-15 Auctions. Bid fast, bid last, I-15 Auctions. Midway Home Solutions in Victorville, providing highest quality home appliances at discount prices for six decades. And Iwan Zak Law Firm, trial lawyers for serious problems and by the Community Table Restaurant in the Holiday Inn in Victorville, supporting high desert teams, athletes, and sports programs. Wheel to wheel race fans gasp and hold their breath as Trackmaster John Aiden goes airborne in the Pro 500 main at the Firecracker Derby. The crash takes John Aiden out of the main event John Aiden has traditionally reigned at the Firecracker Derby. John Aiden, 7, John Wilborn, Camo, 11, and the Dark Knight, 39, Buck Blair battle. Start to finish in the first of the Pro 500 heat races. John Aiden won five previous Firecracker Derby main events. The five-time track champion outduels Buck Blair in this heat race on a night that sees intense and sometimes heated racing among the fastest and most experienced Speedway Sprint drivers. John Aiden races to the checkered in his first race of the day. Eleven racers are lined up for the main event. Pro 500 season points leader John Alonzo, 99 in the pole position. The Firecracker Derby Pro 500 main gets off to a startling start when veteran Brian Struder goes airborne one lap in. Like John Aiden, Brian Struder is stirred but not badly shaken, escaping uninjured. Daniel Smithson is a Pro 500 rookie, racing on his 4th of July birthday. The restrictor plate track champion from a year ago is turning in his best day of racing of the season as he turns 61 years old, here winning his first heat race of the day. Racing out of Costa Mesa, Newport Beach, Daniel Smithson roars to the checkered in the main, moving into third place in season points with 30 Two points behind second place Bobby Taylor, 14 and back of season points leader John Alonzo. But tonight everything went my way, you know, there's a couple accidents and I got lucky out there, but sometimes that's what you need to win and I, I needed it. I did a lot of work on my car the last two weeks, so I'm pretty happy right now. The youngest race car drivers, the intermediates, run the first main event of the Firecracker Derby. 13 have qualified for the main. It will be Braden Struder in his white tan with blue number racing to the checkered. The victory pulling him within two points of season points leader Jaden Manchester. The 11-year-old Braden Struder is from Murrieta. He also races in the restrictor plate class. Restrictor plate main. Season points leader Justin Taylor, 33, overtakes Will Brown in the final lap to take the checkered. JT, 19-year-old son of veteran Bobby Taylor, builds his season points lead to eight points over second place Trent Johnson. The Taylors race out of Laguna Hills. Justin Taylor was restrictor plate rookie of the year last season. Greenback dollar sign Cash Colt, the nine-year-old racing out of Nuevo, is the season points leader in Dirt Carts Juniors. 11-year-old Lydia Brown, white 16, is second. This is the first junior Dirt Carts heat race of the day. It will be won by Cole Brown, white 11, nine-year-old brother of Lydia. They race out of Glendora. It will be Cash Colt standing atop the podium once the dust is cleared and the dirt stops flying in the Dirt Carts Junior main event. Dax Rucker finishes second. Nicknamed Penguin, Cash Colt delights the large contingent of Cash Colt fans and followers by adding a couple of spins in his victory lap. Cash Colt also races in the Intermediates class. Dirt Carts Senior 
Gary Beeson in white, 44, wins. When Daisy Blaylock, 17, spins in the dirt charts, seniors made. First checkered flag in the main this season for the just turned 63-year-old out of Apple Valley. This is Gary Beeson's first year racing dirt carts at Wheel to Wheel. Midway, Next solution, racing at Wheel to Wheel, Wheel July 28th, the second annual Mayor's Cup prices for races for a cure. Decades. As American Cancer Society, Relay he works at and firm. Wheel to Wheel Raceways for once serious again, partner to raise money by the, the community and table cancer, restaurant, the community the table table restaurant, restaurant online sports online sports online report, action teams, brought to you by the community table restaurant in the Holiday Inn in Victorville. This is your High Desert Sports Report, the Victor Valley's only weekly action highlights sports program, covering our area's schools, teams, athletes, and sporting events. Showing daily on the Victor Valley Television Network, victorvalleytv.com.